Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Inka Vat. In Taiwan, the military has spent a week rehearsing a full-scale invasion by China, including an airport takeover, air raid drills, and incorporating civilians, reserves, and special forces. Today, we ask how effective Taiwan's defense might be faced with a real invasion. With me to discuss this are Andrew Yang, former Republic of China, Taiwan, Minister of National Defense, and Tony Hu, former U.S. Department of Defense Senior Director for China, Taiwan, and Mongolia. Minister Yang, Tony, very warm welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you. The annual Hanguang exercise, Taiwan's largest military drills, tests the country's combat readiness against a potential PLA invasion. They have done so annually for 39 years. Composed of two parts, computer simula simulations and live fire drills, which for the first time this year have troops practicing defending Taiwan's main international airport. Leon Lian and Jaime Ocon report. Troops are learning how to prevent Chinese soldiers from quickly capturing Taiwan's largest international airport. While soldiers have carried out similar drills in the past, this is the first time it's being done on a potential battlefield. Because Taiwan is an island nation, airports and seaports are critical to connecting it with the outside world. In recent years, Beijing's threats towards Taiwan have increased, and so have its military operations in the region. But the two countries are separated by roughly 150 kilometers of ocean, which means an attack on Taiwan can only happen by sea or by air. In addition to helicopters, another possible scenario is Chinese aircraft parachuting in soldiers to capture the airport. If Taiwan doesn't contain and fend off this attack, China could land additional troops and push forward to the capital city, Taipei, around 50 kilometers away. Mr. Yang, let me come to you first. So we saw there the very first drills at Taiwan's busiest airport, mm -hmm. and um, this Hanguang was billed as the biggest um, in its history. So for you, how did this year advance Taiwan's defense posture? I think th there is an uh, effort to uh, um, adopt into a new kind of scenarios into the uh, Hanguang exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, defending the airport or to defeat the enemy to drop into the airport or seaports. Mm. Uh, that's the, the, the new kind of scenarios mm. uh, which has not been demonstrated in the past. Mm. Do, uh, do you feel I, that it was the most comprehensive drills that we've had? Uh, I think uh, it shows the, your uh, rapid reactions mm. to uh, protect yourself mm. and defeat the enemy. Mm. So one thing is important. Uh, you have to, number one, you have to know where the enemy is going to land it. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is the enemy is going to take over the airport so that they can land the uh, aircraft, the same more troops? So you have to find the enemy's intention in the first place. Mm -hmm. And then to deal with the uh, uh, enemy's uh, strategy and operations mm -hmm. so that uh, you can actually, in the first time, and immediately uh, deter the enemy, destroy mm -hmm. the enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the hang on exercise this time in terms of protecting the Taiwan airport mm -hmm. or seaports mm -hmm. is trying to uh, demonstrate our uh, rapid reactions. Right. Mm. Uh, you can it, actually deter the enemy, mm. and destroy the enemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in a realistic exactly. environment. Yeah. Tony, mm -hmm. how about you? Yes, absolutely. This is uh, this year's exercise actually take on one of the most dangerous scenario uh, that PLA can can do against Taiwan, which is decapitation strike. Mm. So it covered the Taipei port, the, mm. the Taoyuan airport, and the beaches, and the, and also protection of the Danshui River, mm. the, the avenues that can allow the the Chinese to quickly get into Taipei and po mm. possibly capture the leadership so and we, get a, so get a political surrender. Sure, and so we expect kind of this three pronged attack: the airport. Bali Beach and Taipei Port. We expect that they would do that. Yes, because for China to be able to bring on sufficient firepower to overcome defense of Taipei, to capture Taipei, capture leadership, and uh, they, they need to quickly uh, bring, uh, bring forth so much force. And yes, I think this is a 
exercise that look at the possibility of PRC using this type of strategy, this type of tactics, mm -hmm. rather. So I, I believe th this year they did the right thing. Great. Minister Yang, um, the, the common criticism mm -hmm. of Han Guang is that it's highly scripted. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, compared to other nations' exercises, you know, is Taiwan's exercises more scripted? I don't want to use the word scripted mm. uh, because you have to demonstrate your confidence in your armed forces. I mean, we have trained our people professionally and they can actually res respond to any kind of uh, scenarios and situations. So people have to learn from the Hanguang exercise. What is the purpose for uh, you know, our troops to uh, defend our airport, mm. seaport, mm. and to uh, deter the enemy? Mm. But, but Minister, are they, do they know what the next step is? Is, uh, is there any element of the you know, early, improvisation? The early steps you can counteract the enemy invasion, the less damage you can create it. Mm the more protection you have. Mm -hmm. So I think this is a kind of exercise show to the people, ordinary people, say, we can respond. So you're saying other than, you know, saying, knowing that there mm -hmm. will be troops, the red troops coming in at those, let's say those three locations, the airport, the port, and the beach. Right. Beyond that, right. it's, it's, you know, no, nothing is scripted beyond that. Is that is that what we're saying? Well, what, what, what I'm trying to em uh, uh, emphasize is that the enemy, if they uh, can uh, actually occupy the airport or seaport or whatever, they don't send in large number of troops, only small numbers. So you have find ways to deter those incursion or invasion. Mm -hmm. Then the enemy cannot send in another round of uh, troops to come over here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like the tripwire right. troops, right? right. Okay, yeah. Tony. Um, you know, I j watching these um, drills and reading about them. Um, we're actually using live weapons. First of all, they, it's not live. They they have uh, bullets that's uh, blanks that that creates the sound and the smoke, but but doesn't have the bullet. As far as scripted, before the exercise, they should know what are the training objectives, and mm. from there the scenarios are developed and the troops doesn't know the actual scenario. Uh, right. But mm -hmm. the people who develop the exercise, National Defense University mm -hmm. and stuff, they script the scenario. Mm -hmm. But as far as the participants, they, they wouldn't know. But they should know during wartime, my job is to do this. And once the exercise starts, they know that's going to be exercise because that's part of their job. They need to practice, make sure they're proficient at it. Mm. So, so, so just going back to that question about the, the weapons, live fire doesn't actually mean... Live fire happens in certain area. Right. That's designated area for live fire. Yeah. And Jopeng, uh, uh, down south and places, uh, and some beaches up uh, on, on the west side. But in a, in a scenario where the, air f the red force is coming into land and the blue force is defending, the Taoyuan Airport, for example, mm. uh, they're not shooting real bullets, but they have blanks that creates the sound and the smoke. Mm. Okay, all right. Um, uh, just one way, one point. Yeah. Uh, it's not a real war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't need a life uh, ammunition, right? Mm. Don't need to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, training and exercise, close to war scenario, that's the most important issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, mm. you want the troops to get used to the noise and the chaos. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in, in the U.S., we do the same thing. We want the troops to get used to the explosion and mm. stuff. Yeah, you mentioned the U.S. So how would annual military drills in the U.S. vary to the ones in Taiwan? Actually, very similar. All right. Very, very and similar. And how about in terms of the script script? Uh, absolutely, because each unit commander has their wartime mission. Mm. So during any exercise, they know that the exercise is going to be within those wartime missions mm. that he's going to be tested. So mm. You have to create a real situation. As real as possible. Exactly. Right, yeah. That's the reason why I, I, I asked U.S. counterparts to help us to train our officers and soldiers mm. 
in a real situation. Uh, right. Well, in, in, in U.S. tactical operations school. Yeah. Right? right. Yeah. In, in the you United States. In, in the United States. Uh, yeah. Right. In, in the real situation. Mm -hmm. So they can experience, mm. oh, what is the worst scenario? Mm. You see? Mm. So, Minister, you were um, Deputy and, and Minister for Defense from 2009 to 2013. Right. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Yep. So, so they did, our troops, some of our troops did train in that real scenario that you just mentioned. Very few. Right. Very not, few. not enough, right? Not enough. Yeah. In this year's Hanguang, civilian life was incorporated into the exercise to a greater extent. The military practiced defending a liquefied natural gas plant with critical infrastructure a key target prior to or during a potential invasion. Rick Lauert, Sam Hui and Justin Wu report from the south of Taiwan. Here on the coast of southern Taiwan, the country's military and police are practicing how they would defend a major liquid natural gas terminal. It's part of that national Hanguang exercises, nationwide drills that practice the country's response to an attack by China. This year's focus, protecting and preserving key infrastructure. Taiwanese live under constant threat of invasion from neighboring China, which says Taiwan is part of its territory and has not ruled out taking it by force. This year, the Hanguang exercises have taken on extra significance. Beijing has recently increased what is known as its grey zone warfare against the island nation, cyber attacks, misinformation, and sending military boats and planes around Taiwan. Taiwan has also been watching Russia's invasion of Ukraine, finding parallels in a country fighting off a much larger foe. Russia's targeting of Ukrainian infrastructure, such as power plants, has made Taiwan rethink its defense strategies. With Taiwan importing most of its fuel for electricity production, that's been highlighted as a potential defense weak spot. The exercises this week are a stress test of Taiwan's ability to defend itself under pressure. And keeping the country running by protecting infrastructure like this will be crucial in the event of a war. Tony, so we saw there um, the, the drilling for um, a uh, protection of a uh, gas plant in, in Kaohsiung. Um, now, Alice say a likely scenario for an invasion is that prior to that landing, there would be massive cyber attacks and, and missiles. So, given this uh, scenario, how does Taiwan defend this sort of attack? And, and is this a sort of thing that the Han Guang addresses? Absolutely. It is so critical because in addition to cyber and missile attack, China will activate fifth element, the spice that's already in Taiwan, to destroy those critical infrastructures. Therefore, Taiwan civil defense, uh, the military is going to be taking care of the external. Taiwan must have civil defense to defend those criti critical infrastructures from, from this type of uh, spies and fifth elements uh, uh, attack. So I think it, it is the right kind of things to do. Mm. Minister Yang, um, reserve forces and civilians played um, their role in, in this year's annual drills. Can you tell us about the Tongxing exercise for the reserve forces and also the civil defense of Wan An um, exercise? How were these incorporated this year? Well, one thing is uh, really uh, uh, different mm -hmm. from the previous exercise. Uh, Han Guang exercise and Tongxing exercise simultaneously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. held in the same week. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to combine um, reserve, civil defense, and also the military assets mm -hmm. all together. It's not just the military itself. So, so this year's Han Guang and all the kind of exercises uh, really demonstrate that we need an entire society mm. to, to be engaged, uh, to be engaged yeah. mm. and to defend. Mm. And also to know what to do. Exactly. I mean, oh, yeah. so, so you have to combine the military, mm. civilian, reserve all together. Mm. Do you think that we're doing enough? Do you think Taiwan needs to be drilling civilians more? Well, I think this is the educational process. This is the very beginning, the first mm -hmm. time we combine all three elements all together. So the next step is how are you going to educate people, say, oh, this is our total defense, mm. right? Island-wide defense. It's not mm -hmm. just the military mm -hmm. or armed forces. Mm. But for, for example, there were drills in Tainan 
uh, and also in Kaohsiung, will these, will every town, so city in Taiwan uh, be able to, will get the chance to do this? And is once a year not frequent enough? Well, that depends on government's, government's policy. However, as I mentioned earlier, this is a wake-up call for mm -hmm. the entire society. Yeah. Said. You have to work together. Mm -hmm. It's not just the armed forces defending the country. People should join. Reserve should join. Mm -hmm. You have to play your role. You have to pay attention to your own security. Mm -hmm. So this is an educational process. So this is the very beginning to bring all the three elements together uh, to conduct the exercise on the same day. Uh, I think people should know that. Mm -hmm. And we should uh, you know, educate people, say, hey, this is our total defense, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. everybody should join in mm -hmm. and, and contribute their efforts uh, to, uh, to protect the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tony, so um, the, you know, the integration, I guess, of the uh, civilian uh, part of life integrated in this year's that, that stuck out for you. Um, there has been um, a wide range of criticism of Han Guang, um, and one of them, one of the criticisms is that it focuses too much on an all-out invasion, and perhaps that it should tackle you know, the incursions, the intrusions into Taiwan's airspace, this kind of gray zone warfare of gradually wearing mm -hmm. Taiwan down? Well, uh, I, I don't think the criticism is fair <coughs> because, number one, gray zone is gonna, not going to overthrow your government. It's not going to cause your government to fall, not, not going to cause the communists to take over. Han Guang needs to exercise the scenario that can cause the country to fail, to fall. So that's the purpose of Han Guang. So you must exercise how to defend the country from this type of military in incursion, uh, invasion. As far as the gray zone stuff, there, sh there should be other exercises that focus on gray zone stuff because remember, gray zone activities are short of war. Therefore, the action you can take is limited. And to remain legal, you can't shoot down those aircraft that's flying international airspace just because they, they try to get into your ADIZ. Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you the right to shoot them down. Right. So how do you respond? So that's a totally different aspect of the exercise. But Han Guang needs to remain to exercise how to defend the country from actions that can cause the country to basically fall. Mm -hmm. OK. One thing is very important. Uh, a lot of country and a lot of think tanks has done a lot of uh, war gaming. Yeah. Oh. However, the war gaming only focusing on the war itself. However, if you want to conduct an invasion or war against uh, other people, mm. you have to prepare for that, right? So uh, it will be 30 days or 60 days before the uh, invasion then you have to detect the enemy's yeah. efforts. Right. Right? Mm. Right. Strategic warning time. Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, so that's a wake up call. Yeah. So you're saying there's, there's potential, plenty of potential to deter uh, that invasion from the, in the first place. So you have to enhance your intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, mm -hmm. detect the enemy's efforts, mm. intention, mm. motivation, right? Right. Basically, so, build a defense on the front end. Right. Mm and deter in the front end right. to stop the war from happening. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But, but then once they do decide, Xi Jinping you know, says he wants to Take invade, action. Right. Okay. then Tony, you have said that the, the point of you know, protecting the, the, the coast is to stop them from ever being able to land. Can you talk about that? It's absolutely critical that Taiwan is able to defend. If China decides, decides to take action to to defend against any effort to, to put feet on the ground mm -hmm. in, in the military term. Uh, that way, it will drag out the timing of Chinese invasion and allow coalition forces to come in and come over to assist Taiwan. So Taiwan must have that kind of capability, which includes both short range and long range stuff to uh, not only stop the initial force, but also stop the follow on force from even coming. Mm -hmm. so that it gives Taiwan uh, a time mm -hmm. because Taiwan has no strategic depth, it cannot retreat. Mm 
Mm. You just have to have to hold on mm. uh, to allow outside help to come. Well, what's your estimation of how long that you believe Taiwan could hold out? You know, many people try to guess, and I hate to do that. However, <laughs> I have no doubt mm. that if Xi Jinping ever tried to test the resolve of Taiwan people's uh, determination to mm. defend this land, it would be a big, big mistake. Mm. Okay. Minister Yang, um, Rand, uh, uh, the, the U.S. Um, security think tank uh, released a report recently, and they have criticized Taiwan for not spending enough on defense. Now, as I mentioned, you were the defense minister um, previously. Should Taiwan be spending more? Uh, currently, there has been an increase, um, a 7.7% 7, 7 increase in defense for, 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 for this year. However, this is still only 1.8% of GDP. Is that enough? I don't want to take the opportunity to criti criticize my friends, I mean, Rand. Mm. <laughs> However, so you see over 10 years, I mean, starting from 2001 and two, United States repeatedly asking Tom to spend more defense yeah. but budget, is yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Is that not an indicator of how seriously a country would take, you know, any imminent attack though, self-defense? Well, it's not a willingness or, 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 or the motivation. It's you have to see the substance. You see, we, we are mm -hmm. actually making a lot of efforts to reinforce, improve our military capabilities. It's not just the money. Just not. You know, money, sorry, uh, money is important. However, we want to buy the things that we can actually use and defend mm -hmm. ourselves and deter the enemy. So this is a different kind of uh, perception. Mm. Right? And U.S. Uh, think tank reports or politicians' uh, remarks or statements, they are saving their own domestic uh, mm. politics. Mm. Let, let me raise something else that they put in the report. They're talking about uh, the preference in Taipei and Taiwan mm -hmm. for long-range missiles. Uh, maybe Tony. Well, you know, in any defense, system, you must have the ability to uh, have an offensive aspect of a defense plan. So you cannot allow, you, you must have long range things to, to be able to put China at risk for those things that they launch from mainland. So for example, you cannot allow China missile sites to continue to launch missiles. Mm. You so have it's counter-strike measures. Counter-strike. You okay. got to have that capability to knock that out. Mm. Otherwise, so you're sitting duck. You just allow them to keep hitting you, just like Ukraine. Now he's trying to hit Russia mm. in their homeland. Mm. But Same they don't thing. have the long-range missiles. But they don't have the long-range. Well, but so Taiwan makes its own. Taiwan makes its own excellent uh, domestic produ productions mm. of long-range missiles. So Taiwan must have those. So I don't think those criticism is correct. Uh, because you, you got to be able to not only defend the forces that you're facing, but also the follow-on stuff mm. to, in order to, to stop the war. Mm. Okay, we're going to have to wrap it up there. I'm very sorry about that. Minister Yang, Tony, very um, happy to have you on the show today. If you liked our show, please search for us on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching our show today. Stay safe and see you next time.